water. I'm useless without my espresso. I'm like a car that starts. My grandmother, who's 96, always said, Are you a secret shareholder in Warm Water Incorporated? You know what blows my mind? Your body is already fasting every single night. But nobody calls it that. Because we have turned fasting into this extreme thing, when really, it's the most natural pattern humans have ever known. Exactly. And today we're breaking down why the popular 16 8 protocol might be the worst place to start. Especially if you're over 50 and have been eating the standard way for decades. Hey everyone, I'm Michael Harris and this is my colleague Hiroshi Saito. And before we dive in, I need to tell you about a patient who nearly ended up in the hospital. Linda, 64 years old, type 2 diabetes, read one article online and decided to skip eating for 36 hours. By hour 30, she was shaking, couldn't focus, thought she was having a stroke. Her blood sugar had crashed. She wasn't detoxing. She was in metabolic shock. But here's what's interesting. We didn't tell her to give up on fasting. We told her she just started wrong. We put her on what we call the gentle entry protocol. Just 12 hours fasting to start. Three months later, she lost 22 pounds. Her fasting glucose dropped 40 points and she was doing 16-8 comfortably. Zero medication changes, just patience and the right progression. So today we're giving you the roadmap she used. Three protocols that actually work for real people. But first, let's talk about what autophagy actually is because the Instagram gurus have made it sound like magic. <laughs> when really it's just your cells taking out the trash. Okay, autophagy. Let me give you the simplest explanation. Your cells are like kitchens. And every time you eat, it's like cooking a meal. Dishes pile up, counters get messy, trash accumulates. Now, if you're cooking meal after meal, snack after snack, all day long, when do you clean? Never. The kitchen just gets messier and messier. But when you stop eating for a while, your body finally has time to clean. It breaks down damaged proteins, old mitochondria, inflammatory debris. And this isn't new age nonsense. In 2016, a Japanese scientist named Yoshinori Osumi won the Nobel Prize for mapping out exactly how this works. Here's what fascinates me. This process has been happening in humans for millions of years. Every time our ancestors went 12, 18, 24 hours without food, which was constantly, their bodies automatically triggered this cellular cleanup. It's a survival mechanism. When external food is scarce, your body becomes very efficient at consuming what it doesn't need internally. Precancerous cells, damaged DNA, inflammatory proteins, all get broken down and recycled. Now here's the big question everyone asks. How long do you need to fast to trigger this? And this is where the internet gets confusing. Some people say 12 hours, some say 16, some say you need 24 or more. The truth is, it depends on your metabolic flexibility. If you've been eating every two to three hours for years, your body is like a car stuck in first gear. It only knows how to run on glucose. So when you suddenly fast for 16 hours, it panics. But if you've been doing 12 or 14 hour fasts regularly, your body becomes flexible. It can switch between glucose and fat easily. For most people over 50, meaningful autophagy starts around 12 to 14 hours and peaks around 16 to 18 hours. But here's what people get wrong. Autophagy isn't an on-off switch. It's a gradient. It starts gently around hour 10, increases through 14, ramps up significantly at 16. So you don't need to push to some magical number. Even 12 hours gives you real benefits. And remember, fasting is a stress on your body, a beneficial stress like exercise, but stress nonetheless. If you're already chronically stressed, sleeping poorly, dealing with illness, Adding aggressive fasting can backfire. Your cortisol goes up, your thyroid slows down, 
you start storing fat instead of burning it. So the goal isn't to fast as long as possible. The goal is to find the sweet spot where you get benefits without overwhelming your system. Which brings us to the three protocols. And I want to be very clear, these are progressive. You don't skip steps. You earn your way from one to the next. Protocol one, we call it the foundation. This is 12-12. 12 hours eating window, 12 hours fasting. Finish dinner at 7 p.m. Don't eat again until 7 a.m. And yes, I know this sounds almost too simple. Like, that's just not snacking at night. But think about it. Most Americans are eating until 9 or 10 p.m., then having breakfast at 6 or 7 a.m. That's only 8-9 hours. Your digestive system never fully rests. Insulin never comes all the way down. But 12 hours? That's when things shift. Your liver depletes its glycogen. Your body starts mobilizing fat. Autophagy begins. Stay here minimum two weeks. You know it's working when you wake up not ravenous, just calmly hungry. That calm hunger is metabolic flexibility developing. Your body learning to access stored energy. And honestly, for many people, 12-12 is where you stay. There's no rule saying you must progress. If your energy is good, labs are improving, you're sleeping well, why push it? But if after a few weeks you feel stable and want to go deeper, we have protocol two. The accelerator. This is 1410. 14 hours fasting, 10 hours eating. So dinner at 7 p.m., break your fast at 9 a.m. Or adjust the window to fit your life. This is where autophagy really accelerates. You're giving your body two extra hours in that deep cleaning state. But consistency matters. Don't randomly skip meals. Your body adapts to patterns, not chaos. Do 1410 at least five days a week. Weekends can be flexible, but your body craves rhythm. Komoini. Mabas in Japan, we call this kehime, regularity. Namado, it's how your body finds balance. And you'll notice something amazing at 1410. Your mental clarity in the morning gets sharper. Because your brain loves ketones. When you're fasted, your liver makes ketones from fat, and your brain runs beautifully on them. Stay at 1410 for at least a month. Many of my patients stay here permanently and get incredible results. Improved insulin sensitivity, better sleep, weight loss, reduced inflammation. But if you want to go further, if your labs are excellent and you feel strong, we have protocol three. The optimizer. This is 16-8, the one everyone has heard about. And this is where I see the most crashes. People jump straight to 16-8 without building the foundation. They skip breakfast entirely, eat from noon to 8 p.m. And within three days, they're miserable. Hangry, unfocused, exhausted. And they quit, thinking fasting doesn't work for them. But it's not that fasting doesn't work. It's that they weren't ready for 16-8. You need metabolic flexibility first. You need your body comfortable running on fat, not just glucose. So earn your way here. Master 1212 for two weeks. Master 1410 for a month. Then try 168. And even then you don't have to do it every day. I do 168 maybe four days a week. Weekends, I'm more relaxed. Back to 1410 or even 1212. Life happens. And here's my rule. If you're stressed, traveling, sick, or not sleeping well, don't Push the fast. Pull back to 14.10 or 12.12. Your body will thank you. Because fasting should make you feel energized and clear, not depleted and irritable. If you're dragging, if your sleep suffers, if you're constantly thinking about food, you're doing it wrong. Now before we go further, we need to talk about who should not be fasting. Because there are five situations where fasting is either dangerous or needs medical supervision. And if any of these apply to you, do not mess around. Talk to your doctor. Red flag one, any history of eating disorders, anorexia, bulimia, binge eating, orthorexia. 
The structure of allowed versus not allowed eating times can trigger obsessive patterns. I've seen patients start IF for health reasons, but it becomes about control. They extend fasts, restrict more. It becomes dangerous. So if you have any eating disorder history, work with a therapist before trying IF. Red flag two, you're pregnant or breastfeeding. Do not fast. Your baby needs consistent nutrition. This is not the time to experiment. You can return to fasting after you're done nursing. Red flag three, you're on diabetes medication, especially insulin or sulfonylureas like glyburide. If you take medication that lowers blood sugar and you fast, you can go dangerously hypoglycemic. Confusion, dizziness, passing out. I had a patient end up in the ER with blood sugar at 38. If you're on these meds and want to try IF, you must work with your doctor to adjust dosing and timing. And yes, many people can reduce or eliminate diabetes meds with IF, but it must be supervised. Red flag four, you have chronic stress, burnout, or adrenal fatigue. If you're already exhausted with high cortisol and poor sleep, Fasting adds stress to a stress system. Fix your sleep first. Manage your stress. Then consider gentle fasting like 12-12. Red flag five, you're underweight, losing weight unintentionally or frail. If your BMI is under 18.5, fasting is not for you. You need to build up, not break down. And even if none of these apply, Pay attention to your body's signals. And when you're present and calm, your parasympathetic nervous system activates. Which means better digestion, better nutrient absorption. Your body can actually use the food properly. Versus eating while stressed. When your sympathetic system is on and digestion shuts down. So even perfect food, eating wrong, doesn't serve you well. Okay, I'm adopting the three breaths ritual. That's powerful. Good. And the other ritual, your last meal of the day. What about it? Finish eating at least two hours before bed. Three is better. And make that meal lighter. Because when you eat a big meal right before sleep, your body is trying to digest while also trying to repair. It can't do both well. Your sleep quality suffers, your digestion suffers. So finish eating three hours before bed then brush your teeth. Brushing becomes a closing ritual. It signals to your brain, kitchen is closed, eating time is over. I love that. Kitchen is closed. These small rituals make fasting sustainable because it's not about willpower. It's about creating supportive patterns. All right, let's bring this home. Three key takeaways for anyone starting intermittent fasting. Number one. Start with 12-12, everyone, no exceptions. Two weeks minimum. Let your body adapt. Metabolic flexibility doesn't happen overnight. Then move to 14-10 if you feel good. Stay there for at least a month. And 16-8 is optional. You don't need it to get benefits. Number two, make it a ritual, not a rule. Three breaths before your first meal. Finish eating three hours before bed. Brush your teeth as a closing signal. Small practices that shift you from fighting to nurturing. Number three, listen to your body above everything else. If fasting makes you exhausted, irritable, or obsessive, you're doing it wrong. Pull back, adjust, there's no prize for suffering. Fasting should give you energy and clarity not drain you. And if you have any of those red flags, eating disorders, pregnancy, diabetes meds, chronic stress, underweight, talk to your doctor first. Your health is too precious to experiment with alone. So start with Linda's protocol, 12-12. Master it. Then decide if you want to progress. We want to hear from you. Have you tried intermittent fasting? What's worked? what hasn't. Leave a comment below, and if this was helpful, share it with someone who's thinking about trying IF. Because the more people who do this right, 
the fewer emergency calls we get. Exactly. All right, everyone. Until next time, take care of yourselves. And each other.